Okay, so actually there's a thought that I will put this slide later, so don't think about it uh, so far. Um, I'm Krzysztof Zepski, I'm representing um, the fundament, but first of all, I'm here for two reasons. The first reason is I want to tell you about the project that actually Kuba already mentioned, uh, which is the analysis I did prepare for TechSoup and uh, Fundament, uh, who are the leaders of the transparency project, and the analysis is uh, ready on the website, very nice, presented by uh, Anna Kuliberda and others. So thanks for that, and you can find it. The name of that is Transparency and Open Data, uh, why is it important, and uh, how it increases the public participation and uh, tackle corruption. Okay, so come back to the, the reasons I'm here. The, the, so this is the first reason. The second reason is that I love music. All of you love music, probably. But why, I will tell you at the end. So basically, what we have to consider when we are talking about the public participation in open data and so far, that we are not alone on this planet. I mean, we all agree in that. We can see uh, in this room, there's a lot of people with different ideas, and actually nothing in this world can uh, live independently, right? Uh, even atoms have to have another atoms to create something. The molecules have to join the other molecules to form a DNA, and then a DNA uh, is what makes us uh, a people. I mean, you can see it's, it's more creationist theory, but also if you uh, think about the, the Bible or the Old Testament, uh, we have Adam, who was only one person. You know why he was only one person? No, not because he was a selfish guy and he wanted to be the first and all this gender discussion. It's all because the God wanted to tell us we are all equal. We have the same ancestors, right? So no one can claim that their ancestors are uh, much better. So everything that connects us, that uh, is inspiring us, in this word is that we are living in the society. The Aristotle said, uh, it's a funny thing actually, because probably he said it is in Greek, but we know the Latin quotation, which is also the funny thing when you uh, uh, think about an open data and reusing uh, some information. He said, ubi homo ibi societas. Ubi societas ibi lex. So where is the man? there is a society. Where is the society? There is a law. I think it's time to add the new factor. The new factor would be ubi societas ibi informatio. Where there is a society, there is, a, um, uh, there is an uh, information. Um, but have you ever thought uh, about the process of communication from the very early years of our lives? I mean, how uh, it's happened that we are, uh, were taught how to talk. We're uh, given, with our parents gave us the words, the environment uh, gave us some context, and uh, from time to time we're practicing, we're able to speak and communicate with others. We are showing others what is in our mind. We are showing others what we do think and others are showing us uh, what inside their uh, heads. It's the same with open data, basically. It's kind of a, the same interaction. Uh, it's a bit different, but the communication is uh, quite uh, the, the same. But when we're talking about the communication and open data, we're very often thinking that it's more law and technology, like very boring stuff. I mean, for myself as a lawyer, even, it works the same. Uh, so, um, uh, we have to treat it more naturally. It's a part of our life. I mean, open data is only the part of the communication uh, like we're doing now. I'm talking to you, you're, you're listening to me, you probably have your thoughts, and this works the same for uh, the open data because the communication or open data in that field, they are not less uh, natural to mankind than eating and loving. And that's why we have this quotation like food for thoughts, 
right? So it's like eating a bit. And uh, we have love. Love is uh, taking responsibility for others. Love is uh, um, finding your own place. Love is to have a, a connection. So um, this is, these are the crucial, um, I would say, fundamentals if it's not the English word, but uh, the, 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 the base or uh, the concrete of any society, every society needs to have this sort of communication, the knowledge to have the ability to create, to reuse the information, and this actually uh, make us the human beings. So we communicate in the same way as we eating or we love. Um, Okay, so coming back to democracy, it's uh, very similar things. I mean, we all know that who have knowledge have the power. So who is sharing the knowledge is sharing the power. And that's why the communication and knowledge and data in general is so important in the terms of democracy. Because there's no democracy without the freedom to receive and to impart the uh, information. Uh, there is no democracy with uh, the possibility of having the people accountable for the actions. We have to communicate. It's quite obvious. The open data gives us this possibility that we can do it in a different manner, uh, in a different manner but still is a part of uh, something that is with us, with the humankind, for, uh, for centuries. But you have to, uh, especially when you are open data or more freedom of information activist, you know there is a, a debate between a division between the open data and the freedom of information as, uh, as such. Um, it's all about the way you want to use it or the way you're thinking about the knowledge I just mentioned before. Imagine, for example, that you are... Um, a citizen in some of the town, and uh, there's a new timetable on the train station. And on the timetable, only you have an hour of depart and the hour of arrival of the trains. But you have no idea where it's going to take you or where it's come from. So this is the, something that we have, especially in the context of uh, the sources of information, that not every piece of data when it's left alone or when it's uh, only a part of it, uh, it's, uh, I would say, important for us. Like this rail station uh, uh, example, timetable example, showed us that uh, uh, basically we got lost. I mean, we have very nice presented timetable. It's a, it's, a, it's a perfect gift. Everyone is happy, but at the same time, we have no idea how to have a weekend off or how to get to our, our uh, work. So we have to remember that technology is supporting a democracy, but does not create it. A uh, couple of months ago, I was in Mexico for the OGP summit with Shandor, who is somewhere here. And uh, it's, it was funny experience at some point, because we were talking about open data. The mayor of Mexico has shown us uh, cool data on traffic in Mexico capital city. But at the same time, we met during the party, a journalist from Mexico, which said like, hey, come on. I mean, each year several journalists are being killed because of disseminating very dangerous uh, information, dangerous for politicians. So basically, um, uh, this, is, this, is, this is something that we also we, we, we have, to, we have to remember that the technology, the only the putting the data, uh, the data sets, which are, I would say, sometimes indifferent for the society or indifferent for the democracy, it's not enough to tell that we are in the democratic um, uh, state or democratic. Uh, uh, society. And I do agree that we need all sorts of data, and uh, this data help us to protect also other freedoms of liber or liberties. Uh, this is the case, especially um, relevant 
to freedom of information. Even the United Nations said that the freedom of information is kind of the mother of all human rights. Because having information, you can protect yourself, uh, you can save your health, you can save your life, you can protect your family, you can exercise more freedoms and rights and liberties that uh, exist in the modern world. Without information, we even don't know to which hospital go if we're having a heart attack. So remember that it's a freedom of information, it's a mother of all human rights, and we shall respect it on this field. So um, this is the, this is the um, enormous part, enormous part of the system of human rights um, uh, convention documents uh, that uh, we, uh, without the freedom of information, there's nothing in between. But, but it is a very important thing that I was telling you that we are living in a society. So we are living in a society, so my human right is restricted by the human right of any other person. And we have to agree with that to live in a friendly environment to be connected with each other, that when my freedom ends, where your freedom starts. So for, for that reason, we have all exceptions, we have limitations or restrictions in the freedom of information. So privacy, state secrets, commercial secrets are only the examples. But what the international documents are saying on that, and in most legislative documents uh, in, in your countries, you will find it, that you can restrict the freedom of information when it's necessary in the democratic state. So it's possible, but do not cut the tongue without a very good reason, but be aware that someone can, from time to time, approach you with scissors, uh, but have to justify it very, very good. Okay, so now we all uh, have to come back to the uh, case of uh, this corruption and public participation, which I mentioned in the, in the beginning of my presentation. And uh, we're all aware that uh, corruption loves secrecy. Right? So where something is hidden, sometimes the politicians believe that the problem is solved, or uh, they do believe uh, that uh, if not the people, are, the public, are not aware of that, they, they are, uh, they, can, they can do everything uh, with our money, what they want. So uh, open data give us the possibility that it's not longer in secrecy, that corruption is no longer there. Because when one is naked, it's quite hard to hide the envelope with money. I know you see it. I mean, it's, it is still possible. It is still possible. We don't have uh, uh, these hopes that uh, open data, freedom of information, will eliminate the corruption. But it, make, it, it will make it much more difficult to, uh, to appear. And we have some successes, actually. Uh, it's, uh, especially, it's very uh, important for me, or very interesting for me, uh, on uh, how, to, uh, how we can measure what, uh, what uh, open data, what freedom of information gave to the prevention of corruption. And actually, one of the UK research shows that 7% of corruption cases were revealed thanks to open data. And I think it's a, it's a very, very uh, good start, right? It's 7% uh, out of nothing in some years. I think that we should think how to develop uh, this to be, I don't know, 20, 25%. I think uh, this is possible. Um, and public participation. I mean, we're all saying about uh, the crowdfunding, public participation. There's always a relation between the state and the people, between the people uh, themselves. And uh, open data gives us possibility to share the common information, to exchange our ideas, to think about uh, how to uh, challenge some problems in our state. And this is the way of 
collective thinking. I really like this phrase. The collective thinking helps a lot in, the, in, in democracy. And uh, I think that all the people who are doing that, they are really cool guys. So it's uh, open data. It's like always walking in the good um, uh, company. Okay, uh, it's just uh, about the end, and um, I know that maybe for some of you I, I was a bit naive, I mean I sounded a bit naive, saying that uh, we move on. I know there's a lot of problems with data, I mean there's a, one side we have tons of information that it sometimes is useless because of different things, like it, it's not interoperable, it's, it's, it's not usable by all and for all, and a lot of information is still uh, hidden from our side. But I think we made a really big progress, even if sometimes uh, we are um, hopeless at some point. Point. And this reminded me of a very famous song, which is uh, sung on the stadiums all over the world. And uh, it has a dub double meaning, actually, in the terms of uh, public participation and some kind of a motivation. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky. So. Just chill up. I mean, there are bad times and good times with open data. But basically, I mean, there is a sun. So there is a sun, a sunlight, which is also a synonym or the allegory of, uh, of open data. Right? We have this sunshine uh, uh, day, for example. Uh, does anyone know which song is that? Liverpool. Yeah, they sing it. It's, it's sung on the stadiums, that's sure. Uh, but uh, before I tell you that, I just uh, mention one thing because I promise you uh, the, reason, the second reason I'm here. I love music. I think the music is the best example of how open data works. Here you have data, and here in music you have notes, sounds. You're taking a sound, I mean, one sound doesn't mean anything, but if you, if you are able to reuse it, using this open data uh, uh, terminology, or you can create something more. You're joining the notes, the sounds, and it became a melody. You control it by playing on the instrument, by playing in the game, or singing it on the stadiums. So the last message I want to give you here is that no matter what's going on, but I think that you, especially the people who are uh, motivated to make uh, our living, the state's democracy, more transparent. Uh, there is always hope, and uh, you will never walk alone. And this is the song, The Lost Last Thank you. Walk on.